very good morning to everyone watching us live here at HTV. It is a Sunday and uh, a very good time and opportunity for us to thank the Lord for the fire he has brought us, the life he has given us, the protection and the provision, if for not anything, the evidence we possess of the life he has given to us and the life that we do have. Yes, as most of us have watched the information circulating, today we have the privilege to host the Guild Presidents as we discuss the affordability of online studies. Last weekend, last Sunday, we hosted a program where we discussed the fate of stranded students in their hostels and it is to our amazement that efforts are already underlying. We have students who have been helped, the Makere students have at least gotten some relief aid and we believe this is a program, the youth feedback that is going to provide solutions to every challenge that we face. So with me, as we discuss this, a few, a bit of the background to this, we saw that amid this a worrisome rise in, question, in cases of COVID-19, the President of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency, the President, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, on the 6th of June 2021, came out to suspend and reimpose a 42-day second lockdown that is of course here to help us overcome the COVID-19 surge numbers from overwhelming our health care system. This instigated an inevitable closure of most of the institutions and among other restrictions was the closure of schools as below. Here is what he had to say. So with me here in the studio, uh, I have a few of the concerned students who, from their experience, have encountered the challenges that we might have in studio and with the process of online. We have uh, Honorable Ampumza Dalton, is a student, speaker of the Council of Bishop Stewart University, and also who doubles as the unaspiring General Secretary of Ghana National Students Association. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please say hi to the viewers. Thank you, dear viewers. As I mentioned, my name is Dauto Napumuza. Uh, I am a concerned student about the fate of online learning. And I am here, we shall politely discuss about this issue. Thank you very much. Uh, also on my immediate left is Honorable Okrut Derrick. He's also a student, but it is amazing that he is in a capacity to advise the guild. Thank you very much. As I said, my name is Okuru Derek, and uh, I study at MOOPS, and I'm very, very humbled and privileged to sit here in this table to discuss uh, our faith forward with concerned, concerned with uh, e-learning. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Um, if, if we could share with us briefly the challenges that our students have so far encountered. I know we are all students, so what are those key challenges we faced? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, their presenter. Uh, one, one of the core challenges, because this concept of e-learning is not uh, something new or have got uh, from, 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 uh, from somebody who have seen it before. So, but one of the major challenges is that uh, is computer literacy. Yes. No, no, not every student at school, especially MOOCs, is in capacity to, to understand the sophisticated algorithms that are, that are, deal, that, that are used while dealing with e-learning. Yes. So, it is uh, many students lack out. They, 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 they take long to adopt to the system because they don't understand how to deal with, uh, with, on, with, with online because they don't have adequate technology literacy. So then another thing which, which we have uh, challenges that we have seen at MOBS is that uh, uh, e-learning is dominantly theory based. Yes. Yes. There are some subjects that need practical practical uh, teaching. For example, someone who's doing accounting, when, when you teach him online, he can't fully grasp the concept. Yes. So it is dominantly mm -hmm. theory. So basically, based. they need to change the mode in which they are delivering through online studies. Yes, they sh should adopt to, to a better system uh, that, that, can, that can cooperate both theory and practical level. Basing on that, I would like to pose this to Honorable Dalton. Since the system is not 
generally available or conducive to everyone depending on all the courses you have. What do you think should be done? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the question of affordability uh, in regards to the status quo. The status quo is more demanding than the affordability. Because education systems want to continue, but the affordability is not as enough as possible. So it means there must be something done, which I look forward to presenting in a later stage. But I think this should not only be a question of the universities or institutions that we come from. Yes. Because it should be a question of the education system of this country. Mm. What has it done to make sure a, such a system of e-learning is implemented to mm. such universities? Mm. Because you understand, well as their education systems uh, and institutions, they are semi-autonomous to such a system. Because they are governed by National Council for Education. Mm. They are governed by UNEP. So if UNEP does not have a provision, if UNEP says you must do physical examinations, whereas we have done uh, online learning. So you see there is lack of correspondence in the two. Yes. So I think the entire system from the top to the bottom should embrace e-learning, one as a principal factor that if the education system is giving a platform for this to happen, then it will be a little bit easier for students. Because the implementation strategy from above should be a, a better framework because institutions might not work independently because as I may talk now, you see you might have pending two graduations. But Chambogo has students who are, are, are not yet finishing the previous year. Yes, yes. So the question is about the system mm -hmm. as a country. That mm -hmm. should be a fundamental question to ask and make affordability easier for them. If I can students. come in on that, um, of course we all face the fact that this caught us off guard. We were not prepared for it and we need to appreciate the available systems because there's nothing much we can do at the moment. But how best can we optimize what we have in currently? If it is a Zoom and it is going to be used by every student doing whether medicine or accounting or anything. So, how can we use the available systems to make the best of what we want from our courses? That I will start with, with, with you. Uh, for, me, for me, what I think mm. is to encourage students uh, to, to do self-education. Because mm. there's nothing that can be told in class that you cannot understand when you teach yourself. Uh, for example, by providing, by providing certain uh, materials to students, yes. like uh, reading or maybe research research notes, where, where they can use and teach themselves. Mm -hmm. I think this, this, this online proper learning will be more practical, will be more, more easily, easily understood, because students can self-educate themselves. Yes. They get a topic, then they can teach themselves. Yes. Then your submission. Uh, my submission on that, I think what can be done is simple. We need to embrace it as simple as enough as we can. Use every platform. But as we may think of Zoom, let's think about if we use WhatsApp as the most common resource that we have. Yes. How could we start from a small to a bigger system? Yes. And then because if we don't realize that even WhatsApp is possible for academics, what information do we share then? Don't we get the information? In the long run, we get that information. So we should not look at the big systems as a country that might not have the affordability to have the big systems. Let's start small, have WhatsApp, have emails, which a quite number, almost every student in a university has an email, but yes. have used emails to, to use the online learning, to share notes, to share communication, to form email groups and share information. Yes. Have we used the WhatsApp group to share with our lecturers? Yes. And if that is done, I really feel that it is very easy for an, any other bigger system like Zoom to be implemented at, at where we need big networks. Thank you very much, Dalton. We shall be picking from that. We remind everyone watching us live that today is going to be hotter just as it is already as we host uh, three guild presidents. Yes, three guild presidents. We have Her Excellency, the, pre the Guild President of Mbara University of Science and Technology. We have the Guild President of, of Makere University Business School, Mbara Campus. We already also have the Guild President of Bishop Stewart University all here. So as we prepare to receive them, I would like to pose the last question to our concerned students that with the current efforts, we've seen Uganda Christian University has come out to slash their fee structure by a whooping 31.31 percent. We have seen that other institutions have come out to say that if you do not, if you cannot afford this, then please apply for for a dead year or write to us and apply next when it is convenient. 
What do you think of that? Uh, what, what I think, because you know, during this era, this is uh, these are unprecedented times. Yes, my experience yes. this for the first time. Yes. Uh, it could it be unfair because such an such a decision affects uh, the, the, the the people who finance us, like the parents, because in, you know it's very it's very hard to to to, to adopt to such a system because you usually when um when when you when you when you look at um, um uh, so if 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 they say like for example. Gil Blue University came out to say in their official communication from the academic registrar, mm -hmm. they said if you cannot afford, then please apply when you next when you next able to. So do you think it is fair for us to go that way? No, I, I don't think it's fair because um, other other students will be left out because if you cannot provide school fees, you will remain at home. And already there's a redundancy that the other students who are coming in will be and it will be it will cause a lot of congestion at universities when when other people come in and also people who remain at home also come in so it will affect it will overload uh, other universities and systems and remember it will be very hard also to assist for universities to to to, to graduate students at, at a large scale when all those who have come back yes. so it, it could be unfair to me considering that we have to move on when change comes we can only adapt do you think it is fair? And the fundamental question is, why would you reduce tuition? In a case of UCU, it is a, a very good strategy as a university that might need a number of students to get to the university. But the fundamental question that we answer is that, uh, whereas you are uh, you're saying people should get e-learning and go on online learning, you need to convince a parent, why would they prefer e-learning uh, to the physical learning? The question is that in the long run, you want to help a student and help a parent. So when you tell a parent, whereas when you're here at the institution, you have accommodation fee that yes. you reduce. We have medical fee that you reduce. And when I send you a student at home, you use that money to buy him a tablet, you use that money to buy him a laptop. So it means you're telling a parent that it is a little bit better to do e-learning than physical learning. So in the long run is that you're creating that rapport between you and the parent because I think sometimes institutions do make business from this. So when you're making business and there is less satisfactory to the customer, then it means at the long run students will drop out from the system. Some of them might not be able yes. to afford to yes. buy laptops at the same time pay tuition. So if you want to make an effective or a balanced equation for the two sides, that is why you bring an incentive of reduction of tuition. Where in a situation these uh, these financing are not needed at the university. Because right now you cannot talk about transportation fee when you are not at the university, where do they transport you? Mm -hmm. So you need to tell a parent, when you're home, your, uh, your student will not pay this. And parents will look at it easier for a student to be home and help in the housework, and as well do education at the same time. So I think it is a little bit effective, it is very fair to have students get online and tuition reduced. The last one, as we uh, prepare for the anointing of our president, shouldn't it be generally the same picture with other universities, be it public or private universities? Because we face it, the functional fees we pay, we can say that to some extent, that money has not been used. As, the, as those private institutions come out to help in that way, of course it can be seen that they are attracting, but also people in public universities do pay their money. And we can say that to some degree, it is not all used. Do you think that can be used in some way for us to help our students? In that pre-brief, I talked about uh, uh, the system. What is the framework that the education system has come out with for e-learning? Yes. We like that National Council has not come about anything about the fee structures. And National Council does not determine how much tuition is paid at the institution. And neither does the education system provide for how much is paid, whereas it may give a range. So I think it still stands with a question of who is responsible. Because the universities have quite a number of, of instances of programs that they want to run even when there is online learning. You saw in the previous sector, public universities, uh, they increased salaries for, for staff. Well, as, uh, Private institutions look at that and would answer you by a question, we are increasing staff salaries. 
and it will be a question of discussion between the two. But I think what should be done is that the National Council and the Minister of, of Education should come and now the system of overcharging students should come and put a framework of, of how it could help the two sides, help a student who want to finish his, his schooling and help the institution that want to sustain itself in such a, a time. Maybe if the if National Council might not be able to help, we have ministries like Ministry of ICT. It should put up a system where institutions might apply and get a, a help on e-learning. They will provide with free Zoom licenses. They will provide with, uh, with loans to give to students, for example, to buy gadgets. And in the long run, the institution look at it as an easier way out to, to reduce tuition and have the system of going. Yes, uh, my last question to, to you, Honorable. Yes. I, I believe to the school of thought that says we do not basically need to, every time we are faced with challenges, cry to the government, please help us when we do not push ourselves to a certain position. Mm -hmm. How can we as students assist our friends to be on board? Be on board to, to adopt to e-learning, e that would mean? To afford the process. To afford the process. Um, uh, okay, right now for us as MOOCs, as, like, as, stu as, as students and also as student leaders, uh, right now, because apparently MOOCs itself are not, are not, uh, we're not stepped into e-learning. The first, we're well, already stagnant, we'll put it into a pause because uh, the, the group president will explain all those reasons yes, why, yes. Why, it's, why it's started. For the moment, we're, we're, we also organize simple, simple uh, seminar discussions, uh, both on Zoom and also on WhatsApp, to help students uh, get used to this system. We, we recently organized a seminar where, where we were talking about uh, the psychological impact of, of students, their mental health, how COVID-19 has affected them. So in this, we help them to, to, to develop their careers, to give them information. Then also, um, we, we, we have a platform, we have a platform uh, where every note, uh, every, 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 every literature, yes, every literature of, of, uh, of, of any knowledge of any sector, you can access it and get it and read it on your own. Yes. So at, at the moment, that's what we are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we discuss using simple platforms like WhatsApp and, and Zoom. So this and more as we shall be receiving uh, the views and the actual progress from our good presidents of the, of the universities that I've told you about. We have Her Excellency Mariam Ikile Tarikosi. I pray that I pronounced it well. Uh, we also have His Excellency Dan Stan, the Guild President of MOBS. We also have um, the Guild President of Bishop Stewart University, Mr. Wilson. As uh, we also welcome, just after the short break, we shall have our co moderator, Mr. Sankara Berhanga, take us through uh, a deeper analysis of how affordable this process can be. What is it that we can do first as students to assist our friends from which at least the university or the administration or even government can base on to assist us best? We have, have we conducted surveys and have we made the best out of those surveys? After collecting that information, is it being used to help our students? Is it identifying those that are not able to continue with the process? All this and more as we shall come just after this short break. So a few days ago, you joined the crowds in the market for your fresh foods. You'd equally brave the risky streets, exposing yourself to the virus. Cut the hustle. If you're in Barara, all your fresh foods can now find you on your doorstep. Download a Let's Farm Shop app from Play Store to order now. Red Star Wine, the taste that lasts. Red Star Wine, nekwele wahano mi Uganda. Kando buka hati, ukuruga hona hori, nubasa kujigura, ori kurabira haduka, yobu wako buka internet. Eluku guzebi obyonka, ebili kukwele wahano mi Uganda. Ea www.guzayug.com 
Do you have Uganda at heart? How about buying products made in Uganda by Ugandans from a Ugandan online shop anywhere, anytime? Introducing GuzaYuji.com, a one-stop center for Uganda's locally made products. Buy Uganda. Build Uganda. I am Uganda. Hello there. I'm Sankara. Sankara Berwanga from Empower Youth in Technology. The virus has brought the world to the knees. Hashtag RIP is now trending. And yet, treating COVID-19 is much expensive. I thus appeal to you, let's respect SOPs and be keen to ourselves. We will surely celebrate more birthdays, many more years to come. All other social gatherings are only allowed with a maximum of 20 people. Online prayers are encouraged. Eat TV enables your event to reach more numbers. To have your event live on Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, call us now 0705-909-760 or 0781-557-245. At Eat TV, we connect audiences for the best of your event. So a few days ago, You'd join the crowds in the market for your fresh foods. You'd equally brave the risky streets, exposing yourself to the virus. Cut the hustle if you're in Barara. All your fresh foods can now find you on your doorstep. Download a Let's Farm Shop app from Play Store to order now. Red Star Wine, the taste that lasts. Red Star Wine, nekwele wahano mi Uganda. Kando buka hati, ukuruga hona hori. Nubasa kujigura, uri kurabira haduka, yobu wako buka internet. Eriku guzebi obi onka, ebiru kukwele wahano mi Uganda. Ea www.guzayug.com Do you have Uganda at heart? How about buying products made in Uganda by Ugandans from a Ugandan online shop anywhere, anytime? Introducing GuzaYuji.com, a one-stop center for Uganda's locally made products. Buy Uganda. Build Uganda. I am Uganda. Hello there. I'm Sankara. Sankara Berwanga from Empower Youth in Technology. The virus has brought the world to the knees. Hashtag RIP is now trending. And yet, treating COVID-19 is much expensive. I thus appeal to you, let's respect SOPs and be keen to ourselves. We will surely celebrate more birthdays, many more years to come. All other social gatherings are only allowed with a maximum of 20 people. Online prayers are encouraged. Eat TV enables your event to reach more numbers. To have your event live on Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, call us now 0705-909-760 or 0781-557-245. At Eat TV, we connect audiences for the best of your event. So a few days ago, You'd join the crowds in the market for your fresh foods. You'd equally brave the risky streets, exposing yourself to the virus. Cut the hustle if you're in Barara. All your fresh foods can now find you on your doorstep. Download a Let's Farm Shop app from Play Store to order now. All schools and institutions of higher learning to close for 42 days, effective 8 a.m. 
7th of June 2021. Oh, the President of Uganda, General Yoel Kaguta Museveni, Tibu Habura, over there on the 6th of June of this year, when he closed schools and all learning institutions because apparently of the COVID-19, uh, you know, in a bid to combat the virus. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the spread of this virus. Now, two days later was uh, to make sure that all students are literally back home, whether university, whether primary or any other level of uh, uh, learning, students and learners had to go back home. Now, days later also, universities, different universities came on board with different letters to students informing them that they were supposed to now start learning via uh, online measures. Now, uh, we, I think what the, the first university to do that was Gulu University. And if I am to read their letter uh, from now, if uh, maybe to remind you, this whole, whole situation started on the 18th. Most of the universities at least were supposed to start 18th, 19th, around that uh, very period. Now, Good University uh, was uh, the most controversial of all, and in, in a letter uh, that they put out, trying to get it over here, Good University announcement, this was made on 10th June 2021, announcement to all students and staff. Well, they had several measures they were putting out, but one that was a little bit uh, controversial was that students who are unable to enroll for online classes due to unavoidable circumstances are advised to apply for withdrawal. Now that was good university over there. If we look at uh, Bishop Stewart University in a letter dated 18th June, also, uh, well, the 18th June, I will come back to, to that later. Bishop Stewart University writing to students on 8th June 2021. Also, amendment of semester one, academic year 2020-2021, that later had uh, 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 activities that were rescheduled in respect to the presidential guidelines. Now, also, in their communication, Number, what, well, trying to get here? Okay, well, a few guidelines. Okay, that might be going to take a little bit of time. The good thing we have the Guru President over here. But the, in that letter, uh, a few days later, the Guru President of uh, the same university wrote. Uh, to the academic, no, actually to the vice chancellor requesting to lower a function of fees. We'll be getting to that, but also uh, the fate for those who may fail or find it hard to have these online classes were literally not on the same level uh, ground. Uh, Barara University uh, also wrote the same later, put out on um, June 11th, 2021, uh, titled Opening of Semester 2, 2020-2021, online. And they said this would start on June 28th. A few also guidelines over there. We have the Guild President here and we'll be getting much into them. And if you could be watching and seeing we have one lady in the building, that's uh, uh, His Excellency. Mariam Ikrit Arikosi is the guild president of Mbara University of Science and Technology and on the left, well it's our norm, ladies first, don't feel offended or something, even you watching us. Now we also have a comrade, His Excellency, well Amanya Dunstan, this is a guild president moves Mbarara campus and we will be also uh, getting views from him. Next to me is a gentleman also, Guild President, uh, Comrade His Excellency Wilson. He's the Guild President of Bishop Stewart University. All these universities are in Barara. Virtually will be joined by Comrade uh, 
uh, uh, His Excellency Eugene, who is the Guild President of University of St. Joseph's, and uh, we will be also getting his views later now. Uh, 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 when this whole situation also came in at Mbaraya University, we had a concerned student who is the chief fresher writing the academic registrar requesting that please the situation might not be as you expect because we might not be uh, uh, going to have the best of uh, online studies. To the academic registrar Mbara University of Science and Technology from Honorable Erima Augustine, Chief Fresher. Now we had these issues writing to the academic registrar uh, on, uh, well, I think the, de the letter was not dated, but we'll be also having him join us virtually later in this debate. Now we are going to start immediately with uh, these, uh, 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 your excellencies, I don't know if that exists, but please, you could say hi to the viewer as we get into this. Thank you so much, Mr. Mandreta. Yes. Thank you so much, the viewers. Thank you so much, HTV, for yes. your invitation. Mm. The invitation was received with our quality. And thank you so much, my fellow excellencies. I'm sorry if I'm doing your job. These are my fellow comrades in wow. the battle fighting for the souls of the universities. Wow. I am Abba Wilson Mugisha, the good president of Bishop State University, pursuing a bachelor's in arts education, mm. specializing in economics geography. And mostly, I want to thank the almighty God that we are alive and kicking. We cannot take this one for granted. We understand that we are living in the darkest moments ever in humanity. And uh, I hope that today's discussion breeds new ideas, new aspirations, and uh, in a way forward on the status quo of the education system we have in this country. I thank you. Well, thank you very much. That's uh, uh, His Excellency Wilson. And uh, very calm, though elaborate and, you know, uh, a little bit articulate. Yes. yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Sankara. I am privileged and glad to be here. And you are a testament of uh, maths prowess in bringing uh, wonderful students to the country and the globe at large. I am Mariam Ichulet Arikosi, the Guild President of Mbara University of Science and Technology. I'm currently a finalist pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Gender and Applied Women Health. And I would like to send a message to my fellow students at Mbara University of Science and Technology. While we began online learning on 28th June, 2021, mm. uh, following the academic roadmap that was set prior to uh, coming for this academic year. It is with great concern that I know the challenges that we are facing as students and the challenges that not only the institution but others, both public and private, are facing. But in light of trying to uh, come to uh, an environment of normalcy, trying to adapt and acclimate to the current situation, we as students and we as student leaders at large are not opposed to online learning, to e-learning systems. We acknowledge that for us to continue our education, which if you look at the Uganda 2040 vision, education is a primary tool to ensure prosperity and development in our country. We know that online learning is the way to go. Our only issue is that there are several uh, bottlenecks that we are facing as students that not only the institution can solve, but also the state at large. From the National Council of Higher Education guidelines, there were several um, systems that were proposed to universities to assist their students to um, acclimate, and not only the students, but also the, the, the lecturers. While very many of uh, these guidelines are key and pertinent, there is a gap where the state itself is not being put to book. Well, because there's a guideline that says yes. that the university must find a way of um, bringing students who don't have data, uh, gadgets, or even network coverage to have access to education. But how possible is it for Mbara University to provide network coverage in Gulu? So I would like us to embrace the fact that this is a multi-sectoral situation that requires all disciplines, all people to play their role, not just students, but parents, not just parents, but even your classmates in, 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 in within your programs, the lecturers, the institution, and also the state. Okay, and I would your like Excellency, us we will be adding more to that. Let's first have uh, uh, your fellow uh, guild president introduce and greet the viewer 
and we are coming to that. Yes. Good morning, Uganda. Good morning, Bara. Yes. Good morning, Mops. My name is Dunstan Deli Amanya, and I'm one glad to be invited here. So I, I second you for that because uh, the issue we are going to tackle is very vital, and uh, we've been tackling it at uh, those platforms of ours. So we take this as a blessing that our voices are going to be heard out there. So I thank you. I thank the management of this television. Thank you very much. Uh, I am sending regards to every viewer who is viewing us right now mm. that uh, we are here to discuss the fate of one line. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I am taking this privilege. I'm seated next to uh, Uganda's generation in leadership. They lead some very virtual, uh, you know, generation and we are so glad to have you uh, a yeet tv the show is a youth feedback and we are meant to give feedback to the people we think hold power and authority but they might need to listen to us now what brings us this weekend is the fate of many students out there who of course both sided some are able to access their studies, some are not. That's a bitter fact. We are meant to discuss how affordable e-learning is and also give out our recommendations in case there's anything that is not right because you represent students that we are talking about. Now, we are not going to waste much time. We'll begin with uh, your Excellency Wilson, Bishop Stuart University. What's the situation at uh, Bishop Stuart University? You could perhaps paint the picture. Thank you so much, mm. uh, the moderator Sankala. Yes. Uh, as the former mentioned, I am Mavo Wilson Mugisha, the good president of Bishop Stuart University. Yes. Uh, for last Bishop Stuart University, we started e learning in 2020, in the month of November. In the month of November, uh, when uh, President had elected for the finalists to come back at the institution, mm -hmm. the university had already set the infrastructure for e-learning. So the, the, this thing of e-learning is not new to us. We are used to this, this e-learning. Okay. Later, we continued with uh, e-learning uh, uh, following the presidential directive mm -hmm. on, on 7th June, when he, he, he directed all institutions of learning to close. So uh, the academic registrar on 8th June, he issued uh, a letter requiring students to report uh, on e-learning platforms. Uh, later, students, as usual, of course, as students, we must follow because most of students who want to graduate want to go away with this institution. Uh, but e-learning, it has its own challenges. It has its own challenges. Uh, you, you, uh, the challenges of effectiveness and efficiency. Yes. You understand, as, as, as students in these universities, we are faced with a lot of, of, of challenges. We all of us understand these challenges. The data costs, you can talk about uh, the access of internet. You understand that 80% of the students in this country are rural based. Mm. These are students who cannot access uh, the, the good signals for internet. And you remember very well that this government on 1st of July, it has slapped 12% data increment, yes. the taxes. And you remember, it, which is very impractical and ethical, you cannot slap 12% data increment on taxes when the country is running at 2%, the economy is growing at 2%. Uh, other challenges that we can talk about, the gadgets, you understand that only 28% of this population in this country own gadgets. Out of 28% in the, of Uganda's population, 4% uh, of the students own gadgets. Then how do you expect to continue with e-learning, which shows that e-learning is not affordable, that we are going to produce half-baked graduates. I thank you so much. Well, uh, talking about the uh, university, how many students, for example, do you lead? Uh, we have about 5,800 students. 5,000. 5,800. Could you have taken, uh, uh, you know, a step mm. in knowing how many out of those are responding with uh, e-learning? To be honest and sincere, there are very, very students who are responding to, to this e-learning because of different challenges. We have the question of enabling environment. You understand, you are, as, as I have already elaborated, the challenges that we are facing, the issues of data, the issues of gadgets, the environment at home. Uh, I have an example of where I come from, the faculty of education, which is the biggest faculty at our campus. Uh, we have about 2,000 students. 
and we usually have what we call foundations, the course units that we studied together. In our, in our class, we are about to 766. But recently, we had a foundation where only 80 students attended. Mm. Wow. Very, uh, I don't know, so sad. It is so uh, sad and embarrassing. The biggest percentage. We are talking about over 70% being left out. Being left out. 80%. Okay. Mm. I think that is worrying. Is it? It is so worrying because uh, uh, since from last year we have had about 30% of students drop out. The students that we started, we, uh, the student that, uh, we, came, we came in year one when we were about 1,000 students. But currently we are around 600, 600 students. That shows the fate of education in this country. Wow. Now, uh, well, before we go to, to, to the nation, uh, the national level, you, you, what, what's the university's position? We kind of missed it for those that might not be able to access Ilan. Of course, you understand that private institutions are different from public institutions. Private institutions, these are profit oriented uh, enterprises. You understand? This is a group of people who have their own selfish interests. You understand very well. They understand that the only source of income is the tuition. So they must make sure that students, whether you learn or you must, they must continue getting money from you. So I think now it is survival for the fittest. Wow. Mm. Survival for the fittest, very, very, you know, uh, disturbing. We cannot affirm the allegations, some of the allegations, of course, put out, and a few opinions are owned individually. Uh, that's that is a uh, disclaimer. Yes, is that's uh, to, to, have, to be safe, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do not want to be summoned by the selfish. Okay, well, uh, let's proceed to uh, Your Excellency, Iket. Bara University of Science and Technology. What's the state of the university? Currently, we are in the second week of, we have just completed the second week of online learning, which began on 28th of June, mm. 2021. Mm. Um, obviously, even under normal circumstances, the first week of uh, education usually is a bit slow. And within the second week, we have, um, we have seen slight progress in line with the access to uh, the classes from students and from this second week going forward we are carrying out an evaluation on the students access to these lectures their evaluation of the lecturers themselves how they are being taught and whether or not they believe they are getting quality service so from this week going onwards we will be getting more accurate data than we would have received within the past week what um, we proposed to the university amidst all the different challenges was to have the lectures recorded and with time these recorded lectures shared with students. Because judging from the previous lockdown, online learning at least it's not the first of its kind. We have had an experience of e-learning mm. and we have seen that very many students fail to attend these classes. But probably if there is a recovery strategy, like having this uh, lecture provided, with time they can choose to catch up with the fellow students. So for now, that is the biggest um, move that as student leaders we propose to the leadership and they affirmed and are willing to do so. Mm. Of course there are several other challenges whereby you find that you find some lecturers who are not willing to, uh, for one reason or another, yes. to share their lecture videos, which is a great disservice because what's the purpose of these lectures? For us to learn. So even if there was no COVID-19, even if there was no pandemic, if someone could record a lecture and share it with a student, it would be really good because even though I fail to understand the first time, I can easily come back and follow through. And you find that very many students who right now are in rural areas and Besides just the, 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 the lectures, you know, um, when you talk about affordability, it goes just beyond gadgets, network. It yes. also now goes to electricity coverage. Mm. In our country, Uganda, it's only 80% uh, distribution of electricity in rural areas in the country. What does that mean? Even though you are to provide uh, data to the students, even though you are to give them a gadget, they would still be limited by the electricity coverage within the entire country. So the affordability goes way beyond just data, mm. but it goes to all those different areas. So be before we get to the affordability, let's come a little bit on the state of the university. Yes. Um, in numbers, you think 
the largest group is in the rural areas. They are not around. Yes. We are talking about MUST that has around how many students? Over 5,200 students. Wow. Something, you know, gets disturbing. For example, anyway, let's first get into your shoes now. You're a student. Yeah. In a day, uh, for example, how many lectures would you have? In a day, I would have a minimum of two lectures and yes. a maximum of three lectures. Okay. Yes. And each lecture usually? Uh, each lecture takes a minimum of two hours and a maximum of three hours. Oh, God. Yes. Let's get into now money. Uh, <laughs> let's first forget about the power and the gadget. You have a gadget. Yeah. Data alone, uh, how much do you use in a single lecture? Yes, in a single lecture, you may use about 800 MBs, between 500 to 800 MBs. Oh. Yep. Oh, it depends what? on the platform and you're it, using. And it, now, for at most, uh, we have a learning management system. It's yes. called Clarolin. But this is a system that was um, created in 2001. And I must say, since 2001, there has been little to minimal advancement to that system. That system currently only uh, allows about three to four MBs of data to be uploaded. So in that system, it's where we access um, lecture notes. But the majority of the virtual classroom, the real learning takes place via Zoom, which is basically a private company that is very data consumptive as was, and was made mainly for uh, uh, conferences, meeting conferences of people who really have access to data. Mm. But now when we bring that very platform of Zoom to a Ugandan setting, it's, it's really hard. Trust me, even with um, the other conferences of elite people, you'd find someone finding challenges to log in. Now what about the students themselves? So if I'm using an average of 500 to uh, 800 MBs, if I'm using MTN, one can choose to uh, load the work from home bundle. Right, yes. but but you would probably have to load um, at, at least three, so that's, that's are around six thousand in a day, you know. But even still, remember, learning goes beyond just the virtual classroom. You're going to have assignments. You're going to have you're going to have to read beyond what you're taught because in universities, unlike um, and and rightly so, they don't teach you hundred percent. You're an adult. You're expected to go and do research, read more. So that data goes even beyond the mm. classroom. Mm. Because you have to research and you have to research, and then assessment is also done online. Cu currently, uh, the assessments are done online, especially in terms of uh, lecturers sending you coursework. So they send you questions, uh, you answer them, and then you send it you, you send it back to to the lecturer. Of course, uh, you'll find that there are several lecturers in different areas who probably may not be willing to listen to the students themselves because what, what a lecturer should do and what, what I would expect one to do is to ask um, the students themselves what model would you like me to use, what model would best suit you. So you find that, for example, I have a lecturer who on her own initiative records pre-recorded videos. She is not waiting for the university to give us the videos. She records pre-recorded videos and then sends them to us before the lecture. So during the lecture, you at least have an idea of what is being told to you. That, that's just someone's initiative. Yes. So we also need um, lecturers to equally take up these unique ways of trying to engage students, you know? You'll find some lecturers are trying to um, challenge students. Some people are, are, aren't attending for different reasons that we are very aware of. Mm. But then you'll find someone um, putting several stringent measures to um, punish students who have, who have not come to class without going forward to inquire why you haven't come to class. So much disturbing will be coming back because uh, there's still an aspect of uh, practicals. We know Mara University of Science and Technology anyway, a lot more practicals. We're talking about medicine courses, we're talking about science courses will be coming back to that. But before that, we'll welcome uh, His Excellency Dunstan to paint a picture of MOOCs regarding all this. Thank you very much. Uh, for MOOCs uh, in the current lockdown, yes. uh, we are doing what they call online assessment. Uh, of course, I can't talk about uh, uh, the status quo minus taking it back. Okay. Uh, the previous semester, it is very true, we did online and uh, we were successful. 
but uh, there is a backbone behind the success. Uh, it is presumed, it is automatic because we were called to do online. So it was the new normal which we had to embrace. But there are a lot of things there that uh, go and brought out. Uh, we have challenges of competence, technological competence, both on students and lecturers. Yes. Because we have to first appreciate that we are transforming from analog to digital. Okay. Most of our lecturers did not study online like we are doing. Uh, so they need to get that time to also be taught how to use this infrastructure. So it means we fell into a system that we are not used to. So mm. the biggest question is, what is the type of degree that we are bringing out? So basing on that, uh, a feasibility study currently is being carried out uh, to decide on the fate of students. Uh, because there is an argument that uh, are we producing half-baked students or we are producing the real students we are producing. So, uh, internet has been a bit challenging uh, because if you look at the Western region, right about now since uh, the president made the decree, most of the students right now are way back in their own places. And uh, challenges are very different. Whereas some of us are facing data problems, there are students facing electricity problems, there are students facing network problems. So now, the question is, uh, what, what, is being, what is happening right now? We have taken uh, a bit of silence. Uh, the whole administration is actually working out to see how feasible, how practical. For example, we, we, we completed our semester. Uh, when the degree was made, we were remaining with only two days to the upper intervention. Oh. So, yeah, we have not uh, started a new semester because there are a lot of questions being asked. If we start a new semester, what happens to the undone examinations? And uh, is it really uh, practical to do examinations all at the same time? So there are a lot of questions about what type of degree are you giving students? Well, uh, let's first, also in terms of numbers, at Moobs we have how many students? Uh, we have 1,500, approximately. One, approximately. Uh, approximately. As a girl president, have you received any call from any student, you know, crying for of all, all this? Would you share? Crying for? Crying for. Like them complaining that please, <laughs> quite a number. Quite a number. That's why I said that uh, we let's, are. Let, let, let's, let's describe one scenario. Let's pick one of them. What did they tell you? Uh, for example, my own class, me yes. and BB, I'm taking finance as an option. Mm. One, the biggest, actually, the biggest complaint was about data. She told you she uses 800 MBs. Per class. Per class. We have two classes. In that means, yeah. So you have to calculate and see someone has loaded. And uh, we have to also appreciate that most of us come from peasant families. We came to campus. We have paid full tuition. We have not been given an exemption of the functional fees. Mm. A parent is paying full tuition, is paying function of his and on addition is still catering for data. So that's why a parent will say, do whatever you can do and see how to pass. So that is a very big complaint. And complaints are quite a number. They are complaining about, uh, look at lectures. I don't know whether you people face such uh, circumstances. Lecture, since it's online, a lecturer is busy driving and they are busy lecturing you. He has divided attention. Oh wow. So it is quite a number. Ah, yeah. oh, very, very much uh, sad, uh, at least the biggest extent. Maybe the only light note is that students are able to continue and maybe they have hopes of finishing their courses, but under what circumstances? I would wish uh, we had the time of each describing the funny moments in those classes, but <laughs> we might not go there. Sure. Now, um, let's go straight. The extent of this problem, you think if this remains like this, uh, what are we likely 
to see. Then also, if there are some outcries by students, a few that already came up, we could also feature them in this very segment. Uh, thank you very much to you who is watching. Remember that you can drop your comment. Uh, we are live on YouTube. We are also live on Facebook. And if you can drop there your comment, we'll be able to welcome Sam, who is the host of this show, uh, later to read this feedback uh, for you. And in case you have any questions to your leaders, then we will be able to uh, bring them on. Also to remind you that in a few minutes we will also be welcoming virtually the good president of University of St. Joseph. Uh, you need to keep around also. He also is also part of this in a virtual uh, setup. Now um, let's quickly run through the extent if this remains like this. Even uh, by the end of the lockdown or anything like that, what are we likely to see uh, happen? Thank you so much, Mr. Sankara. Allow me to bring in a bit dose of history. If yes. you understand that education has not been easy to administer, even in normal times, even in good times, we have always had challenges. Mm. Challenges of feeding students, challenges of, of, of shelter, challenges of uh, providing school fees. You understand that education system in, U in Uganda has gone has undergone a series of reforms since from independence. Over the last 35 years, this current regime has tried to provide numerous reforms, attempts, and interventions to the education system in order to provide, uh, in order to make it robust, so, so that it can meet the challenges of a rapidly changing labor market and and and, and globally, uh, gro globally world. You understand that the reforms that have been made, we have UPE, the introduction of USE, the introduction of, uh, of the funding and the financing architecture, the managerial, uh, the, the monitoring and supervision and governance, funding, uh, equity, equality, and the quality of education. However, the promise of equity, equality, and quality and funding remains elusive in this country. We all of us understand that education is a non-derogable good. It is a human right. Every person in this country must has a right to have a good education, as we have a right to to having a, a, a right a, a right to, to good health, a right to living, a right to a fair hearing. You understand that education in this country has been left to private proprietors. Yet education is a public good. Now, education being a public good, has this government done the right investment? In education, you, we all of us understand and agree that the education budget, the Ministry of Education and Sports budget, has averaged on 18 percent for the last 10 for, for the last 10 years, for the last decade, second to military. You understand that this government spends only 4,657 shillings each and every student. You, have you ever wondered what happened to Makerere? Makerere was the paragon of higher education in Africa. What happened to Makerere? You remember very well, we have even other universities in, in the world that have maintained the Yarua, the likes of Harvard, the Cambridge, the Stanford, and the area. What happened to our own Makerere? The question is in investment. What is this government doing in investment? You understand that the problem is on political and policy leadership. This government has failed to collect the deficiencies and failures in the education system. Currently, the education system is, is, is in an ablation and in a difficult, a difficult moment. The government is ambivalent on what to do. The universities are building us and the government is quiet. It is silent. Don't, you don't want to tell me that the government is, no, is not cognizant of what is happening in this country. The, the government is aware of the prevailing economic conditions in this country. Our parents are home seated. They have been in two lockdowns. They are not doing anything. We have quarantines for both animals and for both human beings. Yes. We, our parents are not saying anything. We are sons and daughters of human. We are sons and daughters of peasants in this country. But the government, it is why you don't. You don't. You cannot tell me that this government it it is it, it has shortage of policies that can regulate these universities. I have, as I have already told you, that these universities they are a bunch of people who are who have selfish interests. They don't want to know. The government should come out and tell us clearly if education is discriminatory in nature, if it is survival for the fittest, then we can look for what to do, we as, as Ugandans. We, can, we shall not sit and be silent about these issues when our fellows are dropping out, as I have uh, already told you. Yes. 
that currently we are still paying medical fees. What is the importance of paying medical fees? Transport fee. We are paying library fund fee, computer lab fund fee, chaprense, we are paying sports fee. What is the importance of paying this money? Really, as a country, we are crying. Wow. Yes, all semesters, throughout wow. the year. Functional fees still uh, a concern in almost all major. And I think in your letter to the vice chancellor, you very well put all this. By the way, did she respond? Uh, let me tell you, we are going to write 1,000 letters, but these letters will be ignored. What I can tell you as good president, we need to raise above all mediocrities. These well, are my we'll fellow students. to what you recommend uh, you so in a few minutes to come. Um, maybe a little bit in one or three words. What's the most painful outcome if the situation doesn't change? The, the, the painful outcome if the situation doesn't change. I think this we are we as the generation we are going we are going to carry a, we are going to carry a burden in the next in the next years because remember we are having a certain percent of students who are dropping out. This, these are facts. These are statistics, and they are recorded by the government agencies. Yes. These are the people carrying out statistics. Now you tell me what will happen in 2030 if the government does not come out and check the education system in the country. We are sitting on a tight, on a ticking on a, on a ticking bomb. You have an educate you have an educated people, and moreover you are talking about social, economic, and political transformation. Those are empty platitudes that the government promised us. If you cannot invest in education, then you, what do you promise? What, what will come out in 10 years? These are people. The, the crime rate in this country is going to increase. The population that we have now, remember Uganda, we have one of the youngest population in the world. We have the second growing population in the world. If the government does not do anything about this, then we are going to face a disaster. Well, a disaster we might not have to wait for that. Uh, and that is why this show is here. Feedback and whatever you can be watching, you're a district education officer, your whatever officer that you are seated in that, then you need to take this as a serious note. Now, uh, Your Excellency, Ikret, what do you think if this doesn't change? Anyway, you could even localize it to must to your students, the ones you lead. If that nothing changes, functional fees is being paid, there's no data here, we are dodging, but then you need to apply maybe for a dead year or something, I don't know. What is likely to come out of this? Yes, definitely. There is nothing nice to say about what's going to happen. One of the biggest challenges that I believe um, my fellow excellency has spoke of issues that very many uh, private universities are facing. The situation is not as good for public universities as well, especially when the URS system of paying fees was brought into brought into place. Okay. Previously. Um, uh, a university like MAST would have access to all its finances and figure out how to um, attach different budgets to different things. But now, besides functional fees, all the tuition that we pay goes to the government um, consolidated fund and then they re uh, uh, reallocate resources to different things. So this, in one way or another, um, sort of limits the autonomy of, of, uh, of these institutions, whereby you're still looking onto the government to be able to uh, finance things that had you had access to the money that the students would be paying, would be easy for you to um, allocate to different things. While we the students are crying, trust me, our lecturers themselves are also facing various challenges. They can't access their offices to maybe have uh, the Wi-Fi that the, the university is facing. You find that they too are now at home with their families, with their children. They are parents at the same time they are lecturers. You're in a class and the, the, the lecturer, you, you, you're hearing their kids in the background. Yes. So you can't expect them to, first of all, put aside their own families and focus on, on us the other children, other people's children, while not being given even more support than they already have. So besides just us, the students, the entire system of education is crippling and slowly falling, whereby people are finding other more lucrative ways of survival. Because what we are seeing now is that education is for the rich. It's for those who can afford. Okay. And judging from our country, Uganda, by virtue of UPE and USE being brought on board, it was known and recognized that very many people cannot afford education. Now, it is much worse when we can no longer have access to the institutions. If you know 
schools were a protective place for children, for students, whereby you can, for a moment, maybe move away from the trials that are at home. You can, for a moment, have access to shelter, have access to food. It's in schools where um, people used to have a meal. So many scholarships have been withheld from, from students. Recently, I, by the way, I am a Mad Bunny beneficiary, the Mulji by Mad Bunny scholarship. This scholarship is given to first years going into second year and they use academic credentials. All first years, like now in Barara, I'm sure it goes across all universities in the country, they do not do their exams, they don't have uh, transcripts. I have a, um, a friend who was trying to apply from a career and even must as well. And when they called, they said, you don't have a transcript, so we cannot give you a scholarship. And this is just one example. So many things have been withheld now that were previously supporting students. And there is little incentive, little stimulus being put, not only on the students, but even the other supporting staff, not just the teaching staff, even the non-teaching staff. We need mm. to look, because this system of education is not just about students. Yes. We work best with all these different things. So we are going to see a scenario, and we are slowly seeing it, where I, my own students are applying for dead years. Because they have seen other things that are now more lucrative. They are going for entrepreneurship, they're going for business. They rather earn an income where they can than uh, pursuing with something that honestly, now they, 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 there is no clear likelihood of success in this area. Because they are failing to attend lectures, they, they, they are failing to pursue all these different things. Scholarships are, are being withheld. Even their families themselves are not seeing the value of their money. You understand? So there are so many things that are going to come on board. We have seen so many unwanted pregnancies because it is in schools, like in universities, where people would have access to sexual reproductive health services. At homes, you know for a fact, if we go to the national school, uh, the national school health policy, why it has not been passed. The previous national security framework, why it was withheld. It is only in schools where there's a certain freedom for people to access these different things. Now, you're at home. Are you sure that it's a safe place for the students? No, it's not. It's not. They are exposed to so many um, vices, so many um, parasites, predators are preying on these different people. The cries that we are getting from our fellows are things that really you find yourself, your hands are tied. Someone is, someone is telling you, I am stranded, I'm in Moroto. It's, it needs a collective effort. So we really need to, to come back and go on the drawing board and mm -hmm. set a recovery plan. Yes. So many of the policies, they are just in writing. Majority of them are not actually pragmatically implemented. So we are facing a challenge where Uganda has, if you, if you look at very many of the, the national conferences, we are recognized for having good policies, but as we are on ground, we don't see the reality. We will be coming to what you recommend should be done, but very key points over there. When we joined universities, almost all of us said, I will get married in my final year. Yeah. Now, second year, there is this chance, okay, now I don't have to go to class. And, ah, it ended let in me tears. move in, yeah. <laughs> so this one here says it ends in tears, and I think that is what we be coming. Uh, uh, after this. But let's also hear from uh, His Excellency Dunstan, if nothing changes really, what's likely to happen? Especially for your case. Moves. Yeah, uh, uh, to begin with, uh, I, I want to begin with what was talked about. Uh, when we are sent home, uh, for those people who are on social media, you saw most of the ladies posting, I'm ready to get married. Yes. They are posting, they are saying, Whoever is interested, I'm ready for marriage. Yes. And uh, that is out of the trauma. They are, they are confused of what their fate is. Because we wasted a year. We are already wasting another one. Of course, uh, uh, this, this pandemic came out of the blue. But uh, I'm seeing a lot of marriages. Actually, some ladies are being married off. And uh, that one really affects the, the set targets. Because as a person, you already set uh, personal initiative. You have targets, you have to achieve. So already, those targets are already uh, disturbed. Mm. Then uh, there is an increase in dropout, school okay. dropout. Uh, uh, I think it's some, somehow a blessing in this case. You Ugandans and students have come to really appreciate that uh, we are being more theoretical. 
in our institution. So, yeah, so uh, students are really trying out other ways on how to really be practical. I'm, I'm looking at myself, I'm doing a business course. Yes. I've studied from primary, I'm at university, mm. I'm again doing business. And you're I'm going to finish. finish. Yes, I'm going to finish. Yes. I'm going to finish and I'll start moving to Barclays, to Standing Bank, to get a salary of 800,000. People have gotten a chance. Uh, for example, currently I'm doing calculus. I don't know whether you know them. I'm doing calculus. One calculus is at 300,000. So if you made uh, if you made in a month if you made 100 calculus, how much is that? So I don't know where you will again convince me that when I go back to school, I will be able to make that oh. money. Wow. And yet we have seen uh, accountants, we have seen financial managers who can't even afford rent. You, you're working, but as you're spending, but you have not yet earned. So uh, that one is, uh, is uh, a new initiative that is really coming out, and I think it's coming for the best. Then, still, that one brings me to a falling education system. The education system is falling How We are seeing people taking different alternatives. Mm -hmm. They are no longer seeing a lot of kisses. A lot of guests in uh, this type of education system. So I'm, I'm using this platform again to, to tell our government, I know those people watch, let them change the system. Then another thing is that education is going to become for the rich. I'm a self supporting student. The last time we broke off, mm. for a full year I was called in three weeks to cover up a semester, do postworks, and do finances in three weeks. I had to raise 1.5. We have closed off. Now I'm facing, we are facing challenges of survival, hand to mouth. Mm. And out of the blue, you're called back to school to finish up exams. So uh, education is going to be left for, for the rich. And yet uh, it should be inclusive for everyone. Because okay. uh, for a country to be a successful one, it needs educated people. Wow. Thank you very much, Your Excellency tries to balance the boat and say, by the way, the outcome, some outcomes could be good because some students are now considering entrepreneurial options because the education journey seems to be long, uh, but also quite a few other uh, negative outcomes uh, over there. Now, we'll be going for a short break, but when we return, uh, we will be having a, a, a submission from uh, his Excellency Eugene, he's the Guild President of uh, University of St. Joseph. He, has, he will be joining us virtually like I've been telling you. But also, uh, we also have a, a remark from uh, uh, Honorable Erima, who is the uh, Chief Fresher at Mara University of Science and Technology that recently wrote to the Academic Registrar, requesting that at least the online assessment be paused a bit. But also, when we come back, we will come some with a few feedback in case you have questions that you put across and uh, after that we will have recommendations from your leaders. Thank you very much. Please keep around. So a few days ago, you joined the crowds in the market for your fresh foods. You'd equally brave the risky streets, exposing yourself to the virus. Cut the hustle. If you're in Barara, all your fresh foods can now find you on your doorstep. Download a Let's Farm Shop app from Play Store to order now. Red Star Wine, the taste that lasts. Red Star Wine, nekwele wahano mi Uganda. Kano buka hati, ukuruga hona hori, nubasa kujigura, uri kurabira haduka, yubu wako buka internet. Eluku guzebi yobionka, ebiru kwele wahano mi Uganda. Ea www.guzayug.com Do you have Uganda at heart? How about buying products made in Uganda? 
by Ugandans from a Ugandan online shop anywhere, anytime. Introducing GuzaYuji.com, a one-stop center for Uganda's locally made products. Buy Uganda. Build Uganda. Welcome back everyone watching us here at AITV and uh, from that very short break. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, before we can we can dive deep into the, the feedback, we we have also discovered that universities have also registered their worries and concerns regarding the process. Whereby last year in July, the, the newsletter that was dated July 15, 2020, universities petitioned the National Council for Higher Education over e-learning guidelines where, if I may read, the universities and other institutions of higher learning have asked the National Council for Higher Education to reconsider guidelines bearing them from implementing e-learning teaching without all students. The idea of ensuring that online mode of learning doesn't exclude any continuing student was first communicated by the President and NCE sent out standard guidelines the task institutions to survey students indicating the willingness or inability to participate in the proposed engagement. More of that you can follow it up, but uh, diving deep into what most of the concerned students have given us as feedback regarding this process uh, is, um, of course, as, as Mr. Sankara had highlighted, we had, of course, the very first effort from our own guild president who wrote a letter but witnessed that it was not successful as most of it was not tackled. We also have Honorable Erima Augustine, the Chief Fresher and the, the, the representative for new entrants at Mbari University of Science and Technology, who wrote a letter to the academic registrar registering his uh, frustration of how students were not prepared to be a part of the process. Here is a brief of what he had to say uh, in his communication, in his letter to the communication to the university. My name is Rima Gustin, Chief Fresher, and here one good representative. So I'm just from a Zoom lecture. It was successful. And during my evening times, I normally pass around my garden. So I decided to take my shot from here. So members, I want to start from the fact that, that I want us to start with reality. That it's very, very true that we need these online lectures. And we basically need to start changing our attitude towards these online lectures. We don't want situations whereby the ID is going to expire before actually the course has, has gotten done. So the first thing is that we need to change our attitude towards them. And we know that we need them actually more than than they need us. The reality is no one brought COVID. It just caught us. Everyone is having his own share. The university, the lecturers, everyone has gotten some small share of COVID. What we are saying is that first of all, as students, let's first be optimistic about them. Let us be hopeful. Let us be welcoming to them. And let us know that that is the way to go. Uh, but then I think the major studies or the major concept that we're going to talk about is how do we make these online lectures favorable to everyone. Basically, I think that, that some, of the, some of the key, hmm, the most hurting uh, effects of online lectures has been data buying because you buy data from morning up to around 5 and, and it's really expensive. You know, so network. You have to look for network. Some even decide to climb trees and you find that by the time you come back You'll have lost a lot or you'll, or you'll have lost a lot of time But then we have always been talking to university and asking them that is there a way how you can make these things favorable to us? We are requesting that is it possible for you to cut some tuition so that you can use it for buying data if you are to go online or 
if the university says this man is paid to URA and there's nothing else that we can do, then what about these small things that you can work on and we know that yes, the university is actually doing something. I spoke about compulsory online lecture online assignments. I wrote a letter to the AR which she hasn't yet responded to me. But I was telling her that I don't think students are not yet that ready for compulsory online assignments. Yes, you can give them the assignments, but for now, don't make it compulsory. We are trying to come to consensus how basic these online lectures can be favorable to students. Because yes, the fact is we need them. Because in reality, we need these online lectures. So how basic do we make them favorable to the students so that everyone enjoys and is happy? So we have been asking about the issue about reduction of tuition. Is it possible for them to reduce tuition so that we can solve out some of these challenges? Is it possible that compulsory assignments can be first put to hold for this small time as students get well organized? Because by the time students went out of university, people were disorganized. Some are just recovering from COVID. Some are, some are looking for where to get money. So that's what we are trying to ask the university that let's get into this and it's not it's not an intimidation it's not a command it's not a an ultimatum we're requesting we want our students and the university to be one where we can communicate when you communicate to us if you can't grant us something then you explain to us much better why it should be like that and we understand but the university has taken this somehow a distance away away from the students and that's why they feel they're not loved so I wrote to the AR, she has not yet responded to me, but I will continue to ask and request that. Madam, it's not only me who needs the answers. Over 1,500 students need these answers. If you believe that the compulsory assignments must be there, for now, then write back to me so that I can inform them why they should be there. You give me a better explanation that I can give them. As leaders, we have two things that we have to do. We have to solve solutions and give them hope. My, me, me as a leader, I can't sit down when my people are crying. I have to write to the AR to inform her that, please, help us where you can. And we request in a good language. We don't order, we don't command, we don't fight lecturers. We, order, we, we try to come to consensus with them so that everyone can enjoy a part of this journey. But the fact is we need online lectures. They're very necessary. Uh, we have to change our attitude as students towards them because they are very, very important. And then lastly, the university should sit down with the student's body and we discuss how we can make them. Mm. My name Yes, that is uh, Honorable Erima explaining and reading for us between the lines regarding the communication he made to the Academic Registrar Mbara University of Science and Technology. Hopefully, he will be getting feedback just like the others who are waiting. Um, also, we have uh, His Excellency Yidin, the, the Guild President, that uh, also registered his, his submission as we shall, we shall receive later. Yes, some of the key feedback that you have sent, a brief summary of it. Uh, one going to uh, His Excellency Wilson was talking about how the Faculty of Science, usually those students who are doing education, when you see their timetable, it is always fixed from almost morning to evening and they have very many course units. So can, does the guild, like, do they, do the guild presidents have any plan for them, at least to assist them since they have very many course units, among others who might also have. Then later also we have something else from Honorable Ekilet, saying that we have delays, I think this is a master student, delays in uploading of recorded material. We have, we have our lectures being recorded, but they are not yet uploaded for later viewing. Then also to Honorable Dunstan, basing on your submission, somebody wants to know, should we sound the trumpet for curriculum change? Should we, have, should we have our curriculum changed so that at least we have more of the pragmatic approaches to our interested courses? 
Then also, this I think is general to everyone, can we afford to miss out on the progress and get stagnated at this point since most of, of the concerned parties are not coming to our aid? Then also, of course, considering the fact that government and other institutions have failed to invest, as Honorable Dunstan had mentioned. Yes, this and uh, much more uh, allow me to invite Mr. Sankara after this short commercial break, as, uh, because I believe that on the flip side of every challenge is always an opportunity. So they hopefully will be telling us, and also pondering on, on the fact that can we shift from the book of lamentation and go to the book of acts. This and much more after the break. Thank you very much. Our host, your excellencies, and our media listeners, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Eugene Nwamanya, the uh, president of the University of St. Joseph, Bayara. And I'm so privileged to be here to share with you on matters of national importance, mainly those concerning the students' affairs in this country. Uh, today's discussion uh, being on how affordable is e-learning, and uh, we all know that uh, e-learning came as a result under the titularization of using ICT in uh, betterment of the education system and this was all to ensure that students don't lose their valuable time in education during this imposed uh, COVID uh, midst fears of contradicting COVID-19. We all know that schools have uh, been shut down for a while now and uh, students are were sent home. However, most schools, are mainly the tertiary institutions, have come up with the idea of online classes uh, for learners to start their respective academic years instead of wasting time uh, due to the delay in government's response to opening schools. The education system in Uganda has undergone different evaluations in the past, and to me, I think... Uh, I think that we should also embrace this online idea and um, let's uh, as students uh, let's not look at it as it's being enforced on us by uh, our different administrations uh, online uh, teaching or online uh, learning uh, has come at a time where we were all not ready for it the lecturers were not ready for it, the parents were not ready for it, the students themselves were not ready for it. Uh, but as we all know, we are in an era of business unusual. Uh, according to the topic of discussion, how affordable is e-learning? Uh, like I've clearly said it, it has found us in, an, in, 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 a, in a time of abnormal. So. Uh, it's we, it's upon we to think uh, outside the box. Uh, since we are in a situation of, um, of ab which is abnormal, so you can't think normally in an abnormal situation. We need to leave our comfort zones. Uh, we need to, to strive hard so to compensate for the time that has been lost. So through online uh, teaching, I think we'll be able to compensate the time lost and uh, the time that would be lost. Uh, it is not affordable to most of the students, like I've clearly said. It got us off guard, where most of the students were not ready. Uh, you see, when, when, when you are to dig deep, uh, online uh, teaching uh, comes up with uh, a lot of requirements, like any other uh, system. So you find uh, as students, we need uh, data, daily data. As students, we need uh, phones, uh, good smartphones. As students, uh, we need laptops, we need computers to be able to, to run the, the, the online uh, thing. 
successfully so you find a student who never had a phone this time this time around he needs a phone a good phone that uh, that has a, a very fast internet speed a good phone that maintains battery a good phone with enough storage and those are all exp expenses so how affordable is e-learning one uh, e-learning is very expensive uh, you find you need you need data every day and we all know that uh, data in uganda is not that cheap and like any other countries uh, in uganda we don't have a student's project uh, like we don't have students uh, data bundles we don't have students packages uh, since this uh, whole thing is new Yes, thank you very much. We're still watching A8 TV. We are on the youth feedback as the show. The show that is meant to tell the story of the youth to those that actually might not think we are watching because we be there. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, His Excellency Eugene, the good president of University of St. Joseph. It is here in Barana and uh, uh, also painting the picture uh, from the university. But earlier before uh, 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 we got also a remark from the Chief Fresher Mbara University of Science and Technology also with his submission. And also Sam had to give a few feedback, especially from those of you watching us from YouTube. Now, um, those of, uh, of you watching us from Facebook, a quick one, Abasa Christopher, which Fiji, you say, uh, great work, Mr. Bojeta, must have shown a great mobilization on e-learning. His Excellency Amanya Dunstan, where is the reaction of MOOCs as a university of government? I don't know if that gets to be clear, but he says he's streaming from Kashekure uh, Bugamba Ruampara and he says thanks for the show. I don't know Morris, you say what should the government do to implement the policies that are made to be oh, to be of memorabilia in two writings rather than being practical? Thank you. This goes to Her Excellency, Ikret. I do not know how you get the dictionary, but he seems to be implementation, I mean, policies are meant uh, sort of theoretical, I mean, they're on paper, but they are not being implemented out there. Uh, Pink Shafan, you say you are streaming from Mitoma. Let Ikret talk about the use of our functional fees. They should be a good supplement to this online stuff. Thank you very much, Pink, for watching from Mitoma. At Kunda Alinias, you say, I can see BSU has been represented, though, thanks to everyone for showing us. I think there must be political in any way, but um, thank you very much for representing Bishop Stewart at University. Uh, Sewante, John Bosco, good to see Must Guild streaming from Chibare District, Bunyoro region. Bamsime Wilbrod Sparks. Streaming live here in the well-known area of tea plantation. I do not know the very area. But he says, regards to Ahabaho, uh, His Excellency Ahabaho Wilson Mugisha and the entire house. Biamukama uh, Nicholas, you say, scrap of functional fees, BSU. Okay, thank you very much, Nicholas, for representing. To Muichiri, say, Albert, our Ivanda University is not represented. Sorry about that, brother. Uh, trust me, we'll be getting, this is here to stay, we'll be getting to you. Uh, Nduguruna Tushabe is also following, and the rest of us, Anitre Morris also coming back, saying, I love the show, thank you. Corinne is Nduguchire, say, you're watching, MC Kolo UG, you're watching from Barara, and this is good. Akabwai, Stephen, you say, all the best, your excellencies, regards to Abaho uh, 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 Wilson. Best Jadinas, you say you're watching live from Yumbe. Thank you very much, brother, for following. Adian Asimwe, Honorable Wilson in the house. BSU representing. So proud of you, brother Wilson. Now, all that is very good. We are going to first have a round of us re uh, responding to a few from what some read to us from YouTube and a few that came from here. I think most of two of them to Ikret and also you. Someone says scrap off function of his. 
So we're going to have uh, a little bit. Let me see what they had for you. Uh, there was a question about, uh, I think, it, well, it wasn't so clear, but at least there was. And uh, he said, um, Amanya Dunstan, where is the reaction of MOOBs as a university of government? I don't know how we to you interpret that, but that's how Ndugu uh, Abasa Christopher from Kashekure Bugamba Rampara puts that. Let's begin with uh, Your Excellency Wilson. Uh, thank you so much. There was a question about the issue of the timetable. Yes. The issue of the timetable, it, it has not started with e-learning. Mm. This, uh, this, this one has been uh, a disturbing issue because we have uh, felt different course units colliding. Yes. Uh, and uh, we have always, even when we are physical at, at the university, we mm. always have course units colliding. Even when we are having e-learning, we have always had course units colliding. I think this is a departmental issue. I'm going to take this issue uh, to the council that the JRC representing the science department so that they can rectify the issue of the course units that are, coll are, coll are colliding in that department. And then the issue of scrapping of functional fees. As I, as I have already told you that we are going to write 1,000 letters, we are yes. going to write 1,000 petitions, but these people they are going to ignore. Mm. I want to remind you what happened to the students' movements in 1960 that led to nationalism and independence. And what, we are moving with it now. Yes, and what happened? There is a, there, there is a reluctance of student leaders and even students. Uh, today's students, they, only, they are only worried about posting memes on social media. If we start a campaign of scrapping of functional fees, from north to west and east, let me tell you we can have a change. If, we, if, if, if students lead us, if we remain in our comfort zones, yes. if we don't roll up our sleeves, mm. if we don't become assiduous, if we don't become clamor, if we don't become pernicious on the issues that are disturbing students in, in, in this country, nothing will change. Okay. Mm. Uh, he reads the books of uh, Honorable Koto in the Apple Who. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Mide seems to be your other writer that you follow. We will come to your recommendations, but you seem to be calling out for a revolution. Is it? Of course, we have, we have missed four revolutions in the, in the education system. Yes. Currently, the student leaders we have in this country, these are student leaders who just imbibe on the privileges, they are symbolic, they are prestige. Really, we have students who are suffering. We should come out, it, this is the time to, to rise above mediocrity mm. and, trivi and trivialities and we take charge of this country. Okay. If we don't do this, we are not going to realize the potential of this country. If we don't do this, let us all of us become students and puppets. Well, I will be the last person to agree to be part of that last statement. But uh, let's welcome uh, Your Excellency Ikrit. You had a few queries. I hope you noted them. Yes. Um, one of the questions one was on uh, policy mm. implementation. Mm. Uh, one thing that we need to take note of as a country is we need to write uh, policies with the involvement of the different stakeholders who are going to implement them. We need to ensure that all the different people who are not only going to be affected, but also those who are going to, uh, to implement the policy, coming together and sharing different ideas. Very many policies seem to be torn deaf to the reality of the status quo in very many areas. So policies seem to be borrowed from different uh, social systems and just implanted in a country where they are not feasible. So while we can benchmark and see the beauty of different things being done in different countries, we need to have that lens of trying to modify and edit these policies uh, with the option of what is actually in our communities, in our areas, in our country, to make these policies very feasible. Because uh, if we just look at the Odell policy, um, it doesn't put into consideration that people do not have uh, access to gadgets, to network coverage, yes. to electricity. Mm -hmm. So. Um, provisions for solving the bottlenecks that are limiting people from um, having access to the beauty and the best result of these policies should be put into consideration. When you look at the National Council of Higher Education guidelines, they equally seem to be um, ignorant of the actual situations in different universities. They are just written on paper, but the actual feasibility is not really thought of and is completely left to students, to mm. the institution or to the, or to the lecturers. But if we had a multi-social co uh, collaboration, if we had an interdisciplinary approach to putting, in, putting into place uh, systems that actually cater 
to uh, the actual scenarios in our communities. Also, we need to um, have in mind what is the monitoring and evaluation plan. Because right from the get-go, different policies are set, but where is the transparency in seeing, is it working? Not just five years down the road. Yearly, you know, evaluate and see what is working, what isn't working, and then put into place systems that can actually uplift um, the policies and make them achieve the objectives that they have um, put in place. So that's what I believe we need to do to ensure that these policies actually actually bring up the results that they that they want. Okay. Another question was on um, the use of, of, of functional fees. Um, I believe I speak for all government institutions. We pay functional fees per academic year, uh, per academic year. So in the first semester, and these functional fees have a plethora of uses in line with um, the library now being uh, being a virtual learning system. Um, universities like must. Uh, uh, subscribe to different e-resources. Even Zoom, you pay premium packages. You, you, you're paying for different e-libraries. Um, things like sports, things like um, uh, medical fees, all those different things. While I understand the the rationale of scrapping functional fees, you know, completely, I would also like us to know that there is maintenance of these systems. When you eventually come back, because I believe we are going to come back to institutions at a certain point. Yes. Some of these systems have to be maintained. We won't come back and find the, the sports ground having trees, you know? While we, are, while we are having virtual learning, there are now other expenses. Now the, the expenses that were, that were being had in a more physical way are being had in a different way. So we as institutions, as students, we need to look at that aspect of these expenses are still happening. You're still using, you're still having access to la library sources. There's still maintenance of all these different things. Are but we what actually, we must do, yes. I'm, I'm continuing. Yes. Of course, it is not at to the totality of how it was. So there can be a reduction, okay. but not scrapping off. Because when we do come back, we shall say, where is our sports ground? You'll say, we want more basketball courts, you know? So students need to know that we can reduce you know, but we, yes, but we cannot advocate for scrapping off as though like the, 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 the buildings must fall over, right? Even, even right now when you are at campus, uh, there are cleaners who are still trying to maintain the institution, right? Now what we can do in line with getting this reduction as institutions, we cannot do it uh, in isolation. We need to come together as all institutions because if must uh, goes alone as a public entity or, or, or as a university to the yes. ministry, it may not hold enough strength. But if all universities come together, uh, come with a, 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 a strong and compelling reason for us to change, um, to, for us to evaluate and modify how these tuition and functional fees are being allocated. And we have transparency. Because now, like I told you, we are paying tuition, we are paying functional fees. There is a list of where these funds are going. Now, for, for a public university, there is a list that they tell us. But the fact, of, the truth is, the money that we pay in its entirety goes to the consolidated fund. Yes, for public. And then they reallocate. For public. Yes. yes. So it means that while they have tried to list down those different things, that is not how it is, how it is being used. So we need a, 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 a re-evaluation of how is this money used exactly. So that we can bear in mind and, and at least move with information. I understand because on the list of functional fees, for example, the case of the university, with uh, an exception of a few you put, but we also include uh, medical fees. I don't know the right term, but at least some is meant to facilitate uh, your yes. medical welfare. Yes. We have guild fees on it. Yes. We have uh, sports fees, like yes. you say. Yes. Quite a number of them. Will there be some few items you think anyway think now think through and let this come money for this and this and this yes this crap. that is why we need to have a reduction for example you find that in the in the now this is i think this is for government institutions now we must in you find that uh each student in our university will pay ten thousand for sports for sports but the government adds another lump sum on that sports fee to make it uh, a, a, a bigger amount of money so 
we need to, like I said, reevaluate where are these funds going. Things that are not being used uh, directly should be scrapped off. Things that are still being maintained, you know, can still can still uh, continue being paid for. But just paying the same lump sum in a, in a time where where we are under new circumstances is what is really um, uncalled for. Well, so we are we are adults. We're not like in primary or or nursery. Mm. We can evaluate this information. That's why people are asking because now they know. Probably in primary, we never used to question what our fees was doing, but now we know. Most people are are self funded. Even those who aren't, they feel the plight of their funders, of their parents, of their okay. guardians. So we would like to know all those different things. But what I would like us to do is, it cannot be done in isolation as a single university if mass lobbies for reduction it's going to affect bulu mook chambogo if bsu is lobbying it will affect all other universities so we, we need to actually harmonize okay. problems that are shared don't need to worry. be uh, solved don't worry. together don't worry your excellency we are about to come to where you give us your recommendations uh, I wanted to uh his excellency wilson recently to wrote to the vice chancellor of the university regarding functional fees was it? Is it? Yes. Exactly. Lowering, in, lower in function. Lower uh -huh. yeah. So, I would uh, give you at least a minute. Mm. React on, uh, you know, his uh, idea. Thank you so much. Uh, for us, I think maybe for us in, in, in our private institutions, it is different. Mm. I, I wanted to ask a question to mm. High Excellency Italy. Do you pay development fund? How do development you, fund because you on, the, on, the list, on the list yes on the list of functional fees mm. we have what we call development fund and we pay seven hundred shilling mm. for, for development fund. How much is your functional fee? It is it is uh, it is three hundred three hundred fifty thousand in total. Uh, yes, in total three hundred. 50. Yes. So the other one was 70,000. It is, it is 700. 700,000. Uh, 70, 70,000. Okay. 70,000. Then we pay system, main, system maintenance fee. That is 20K. We mm. pay 20K. For system maintenance, yes. we pay 20K. Just Then we pay development fund 70K. Then we have these functional fees mm -hmm. that functions when we, we, when we are available. You yes. cannot tell me that I pay transport fee. Let, let's mention them. What let's are you mention them. Yes, that is, that is transport fee. We have medical fee. We have sports fee, we pay even chaplain's fee. Chaplain's fee. Chaplain's fee. fee. Okay. We pay library fund fee, we pay computer fund, we even pay what we call portion money. Portion money is just redundant, redundant money that, that it is there to use in, in, in case of an emergency. Unclassified. Unclassified, like the classified expenditure in the government's okay. budget usually. Okay, okay, yeah, let's not go to the other side. So, what was your idea on uh, functional fees? My, my idea on, on, on the functional fees. I said, if, even in the law, we have, what, we have what we call natural justice. Yes. According to the prevailing economic circumstances in this country, we really understand what is going on in the, in the pockets of our parents. My idea was that the university should sit down and identify the fees that they are, we are not going to use this semester, and then it, it be lowered. Some kind of, they, they, they make some, some little fixes mm. so that it can help our parents to also have some good motivation on how they are going to provide other costs. You remember that the cost of education has now doubled because we provide other expenses yes. in, in data and other, and, and, and other uh, required things. So mm. my, my okay. argument was that as a Christian-based university, it would be logical and the right thing to do if they lower functional fees. It does not require by so we are feeling mm. to know what is going on. Okay. Well, Sam told us we are yet to shift from lamentations to acts. We are coming back to that. Let's first uh, have you answer the question. Uh, someone was asking about MOOBs. Mm. Well, uh, there were two questions. Yes. One uh, uh, from the previous moderator yes. was about uh, should uh, they shift the, the type of education system? Because uh -huh. I was saying it is theory based. And I want to say certain. For example, when I was still in my high school, I viewed university as a practical level. I thought if I went to university and I'm going to study accountancy, mm. I'll get time and go in the bank and calculate and touch money. But I'm at the university I'm in my last year. Mm. You're not I've touching just, money. I've not caught money. I've not attended to clients. So what is the which value is the investor adding? So I'm saying certainly the education system should change. We are more of job seekers. We are just trained how to follow. But we need to be uh, impacted with the highest levels in the 
information. Mm. So I think for that one I say the education system needs to change. Okay. Then the other question, however much you didn't get it, yes. uh, that student was asking, what has MOOCs done? Because oh. in comparison, mm. MASP is doing online, BSU is doing online. Yes. Currently, currently, because I would say we, we are being played because we have not completed exams. Currently, Kavari University is doing exams online. So, uh, to respond to that question, I, I want to tell whoever asked it, actually I'm telling the MOOCs community. Mm. He was that, called Christopher from Rwampara. Yes, Mr. Christopher and all concerned members of the fraternity. It is, uh, sometimes they said, when you rush, Crash. You certainly are going to crash. Yes. So, uh, we, we, the campus, the university is doing what they call FSBT study. Okay. For example, we run, a se we run our semester on what they call a semester basis, not a modular basis. Okay. A modular basis is where uh, if it is ICT, in that semester you study all ICT and it is done. But uh, we, we do ICT1, ICT2, ICT3. So how are you going to scrutinize, how are you going to examine someone mm. the other semester for two different sets of examinations? It is really not logical. And uh, MOOCs uh, provides holistic, it's a holistic approach. Uh, you, they are, for example, I'm going to compare to Kavari University. I was seeing how they do their exams online. They give them six hours, six hours. So that means if you're given six hours to do an examination, you may literally not have your personal input. I don't know how they do it, but I'm looking at it. I'm looking at what type of degree, what type of students are you producing half-baked students or you're really producing that gist you want in student. So I'm only telling students, uh, it is true we want to finish campus, but how do we want to finish? That is the biggest question. How are we finishing? The university is uh, trying to make ends meet. Uh, for example, uh, they want to start giving exams with the master's level, such that they see how practical. Is it possible? Because it is not a matter of doing exams. How have you done the exams? So um, I'm, also, I'm also telling leaders that it is incumbent on us to uh, solicit, to look for the best for our own students because we really uh, asked for that. We said we shall represent them better. Okay. So we are not keeping quiet, but we are uh, devising means to see how better can we fit in the uh, status quo. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much over there. It gives a... Uh, at least some insights on uh, online assessments. But, um, well, what you're about to hear from you are the recommendations that will transform and change, perhaps, anyway, if, if, if we get that chance. That in year 2024, someone is not going to be asking you, when did you graduate? And they say 2021. And they say, ah, the corona generation. No, 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 no. You, you use the word half-baked, I'm avoiding it, but I hope what you're about to suggest really changes all this. Now, um, before we go to our last segment where you're giving us your recommendations, I do not know if any of you, because National Council for Higher Education released guidelines, and I understand that a few universities also released surveys to students. I think I barely missed one for must. I do not know if it was the case for all universities that they first released a survey and they are able to tell that 70% say they can manage, 30 say they cannot, maybe whatever, I don't know. If we all got a chance to have a look on at uh, these surveys, or in case anyway, if these universities did that at all. Because from there, we would now start and benchmark what were the results of these surveys. For example, MAST anyway, let me talk. I know MAST released a survey to students, but I do not think students anyway received the results from, from that survey. Not, I don't think also the media did, 
Makerere did it. Quote a survey, gave to students, they did, they came back to media. I have at least the results. At least for them, they're able to indicate that 70% said they can manage. I do not know. Of course, from the survey, I do not know. But they say 30% said we cannot manage. And then the investor advised anyway, if you cannot manage now, you might manage later. Or you might have to wait until the end of this. But then they again say you will not be penalized. At least they put out of that. I do not know if our universities did that. And if they didn't do anyway, let's also use this chance to give hope to these students watching us and those officials also watching us, what you think is your feedback regarding e-learning? Let's start with you, Your Excellency Wilson. What sh should be done? What, uh, should, I'm, I'm giving a recommendation. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much. These surveys we are talking about, mm. these are empty platitudes. They are, they are just manipulated. Every university can make a survey and, and say that 70% uh, have corresponded, but on reality on the ground, mm. for us who Did are on Bishop the ground... Did Bishop Stewart University release any survey to maybe do a checklist and say, a okay... Survey, a survey to, to... Students. Students. No, yes. they have started now because uh, we have a, a, a WhatsApp group where the Department of Shualens yes. is trying to... I even asked an assessment report mm. on the progress of mm. e-learning, mm. but he has not provided. But me, who is on the ground, who is also a student, who is a victim of this e-learning... I'm also a student leader. Yes, I, I know what is happening. If you, if you tell me that 70% of students are, are, are responding really when I'm in well, class... That is Makerere. Uh, that that is Makerere, yes, of yes. course. Yeah. And you, are, you understand, Makerere should be Makerere because they have sponsored students, not, uh, not as Bishop Stuart University, who have private sponsored students. Yeah. And, and, um, and, uh, and on the issue of, uh, of recommendations, uh, what I want to say that uh, no one expected this, this COVID. Uh, but uh, the fundamental question, the fundamental issue is that how are we going to help students keep in school, even in these COVID-19 times? What are we going to do? Uh, for me, I'm setting this question to the government of this country. The vital question is, the uh, government understands that it has, it has a young population. Mm. Uh, it, it already understands that 30% of the students have already dropped out. What is its plan? Failure of this government to address this problem, it means that we are going to shoulder on the burden for their inaction of what they did. Uh, my advice to the Minister of Education is yes. that they should identify a group of experts. They, they should make a think tank where they are going to provide a, broad, a broader, better plan uh, for, for the whole education system in, uh, in the country, not using these firefighting methods. They come out of the blue, e-learning is there, e-learning is not there tomorrow. Then secondly, no one, no one knows when, when, no one is told enough to know that this COVID-19 is going to end, whether 2022, 2023, 2024. We don't know really. Uh, my suggestion here is that, like the 27 men who rescued this country, we need 27 men, 27 brains that can revive, that can revise, that can rejuvenate and revamp the academia of this country. Lastly, what I want to tell this government is that they learned nothing from the past lockdown and they forgot nothing. Ah, oh. oh God. Okay, very political here, but uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe in one or two minutes, let's talk directly to the student of Bishop Stewart University as uh, their leader. Um, what do you forget the national mm. level? Yes, mm. let's come back to the mm. university. What do you recommend, or what should they expect mm. from you? Uh, thank you so much. As I have already elaborated, that this now it is time for survival for the fittest. Mm. I want to be sincere and very honest. Yes. Uh, we must have a, a behavior change. We must change in the way we have been conducting ourselves. This is a first change on us. We must accept, we must embrace e learning. If it is in position, if you really want to graduate, if you really don't want to stay in the university for, for 10 years, they must embrace e learning. They must do what they can afford so that they can remain in the university. Uh, my, and, uh, and, 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 and they do what is necessary of them. Mm. And, and then secondly, I want to invite the student leaders in our university and at the national level. We are supposed to have a press conference about what is going on. Yes, we are, yes, we, we are supposed to have a press conference. We cannot sit down and see our students dropping out one and by one, and then we are comfortable with the situation. 
I, invite, I am inviting the whole good presidents in this country. We have written a letter we, to, to, to Prime Minister Nabanja. We have written a letter to the Minister of Education. But these letters cannot be, cannot, cannot be answered if, if we don't become rowdy. The only language these people understand, if we come out and show the world that we need a change in the current education system. Then secondly, is about the, this is the, this, we have a chance now to change the curriculum of this country. You understand that the curriculum we have in this country is old, it is tired, it is magwampic. We need to change the curriculum of the institution so that it can meet the needs of the labor market. Thank well, you so much. Very magwampic indeed. And um, I think I need to uh, revisit your strategy. We could be having uh, uh, a national cause that you have set in your mind and this is the right time to hatch. But before that, let's listen from our fellow leaders, the ones you call upon to come out and um, have their voices heard. The recommendation, the mass student watching you, first of all, we have hopes in you that anyway, we have our server right now. There's something coming from her. And then you also have some appeal you want to put out to a few of these officials or something. What should we expect from you? And also, what are the recommendations? Yes. To my fellow mass students, I would like us to take heart. I would also like to ascertain to all of you mm. that the fight that we are currently uh, embarking on is still continuing. And it requires all of us to work together. There will be different evaluation surveys coming to you. And it is of uh, pertinent importance for you to fill them in. Because many a time we do not um, work together and get the actual feedback and responses from you that uh, showcases what you're actually experiencing. Equally, the lecture videos that have been recorded are going to be shared to you without fail. Because I know for a fact that not all of you are, are attending classes. But through these lecture videos, you can find a way of uh, catching up with the different lectures that you have missed and all the different um, issues that you have been raising in line with um, the learning management system, uh, access to different e-resources, and even complaints from uh, your different lecturers. You must rest assured that all these different things are going to be dealt with one at a time, but it starts with us working together, um, believing and knowing that this is the way to go, and equally embracing the fact that online learning is here to stay and it's actually here for us to be helped. My recommendations uh, are going to start from the state itself. We all know that the best way to educate anyone is physical. Mm. Even while we, are, uh, we know that online learning is the way to go, it no, in no way surpasses the value of having a physical interaction with your lecturer, not only that, with your fellow students, with your fellow comrades. We gain more than the academic curriculum when we are at school. We gain social skills, we gain lobbying skills, we make a network, and this is what we are missing. And believe me, you, even while we are embarking on the uh, academic calendar, we are still missing out on survival skills. Right now, we aren't competing as a nation. We are in a global village, and we are competing with the rest of the world. As a country, we need to embark on a mass vaccination move. Con uh, countries in Europe are now thinking of how they can bring together over 60,000 fans in a stadium to watch football. That is the level that they have reached. Why don't we embark on a, a mass move to help all of us get uh, uh, the vaccine? And then we can at least safely and securely return to schools and achieve all these different skills that we would like to have. Okay. Not only should the state and nation invest in vaccination, we should have an infrastructure um, establishment of different things, not just on transport, but equally in communication. And this goes really in line with the, the network coverage in the entire country, the electricity coverage in the entire country, and trying to um, really uh, bring affordable resources to these different things. We're a country that is actually selling electricity to, to other neighboring countries, and yet the fees themselves to us are really exorbitant. So I would like the, the nation to be uh, realistic and look at how they can stimulate the different people, not only in the cities, 
but also in the rural areas to have access to these ICT and digital resources. It's not enough to just claim and say that you're trying to invest in ICT. Mm. We need to see realistic investments that are, that are practical and that are visible. We also need to uh, bear in mind that when these different policies and programs are being made, we need to not only involve the people in the ministry, but even the student leaders. Trust me, when, when the first online learning came into place, we all just, we were all dropped with the Odell policy system. We didn't even know it was being uh, formulated until it was brought to our awareness. But when you prepare, even before you launch a project, you normally have to go to the people who are going to be uh, affected by that, pre to prepare them, not just mentally, um, uh, resource-wise, to see how best equipped they are ready to actually um, fulfill these different things. For example, even though some students are willing, in the homes that they are in, there are still bottlenecks, there are still limitations, because some of these people are not aware of them, but mm. probably had there been a mass awareness of this policy through the radios, TVs, even the parents would be more aware and, and they would even, you know, ask questions. They would say, my son, my daughter, what is I'm hearing? And be more, more into uh, working with you. So we also need to ensure that um, we assist not only the students, but even our lecturers. Trust me, they are the ones who are actually teaching us. And a, a, an unhappy lecturer, trust me, will not yield to a happy student. So let us, if, let us first look in line with what is going on with these lecturers. Because someone may have the data and they get into class and then they find someone who is, um, is stressed, is unable to teach, and then that backfires. It's, it, it's a snowball effect right from the top straight to the, the, the lowest confines of, of the state. Mm. Besides that, we also need to have... Um, behavioral change, not just amongst the students, but starting from equally um, the universities, the top management, the lecturers themselves, the supporting staff. Let us embrace and see how we can work together to give our contribution to the system that we are in. I know for a fact that we will never be the same again. We have been baptized with fire. And this could be a chance for us to emerge even better, even more, um, even more determined, even more equipped to actually uh, overcome all the different challenges. To the students themselves, we can do this. We can do this if we work together, not just in our classrooms, but in the entire globe as well. Even when you're in class and someone is not, not attending a class, how can we reach out to our friends? We are so many. A lecturer may not call each and every one of you. I may not call each and every one of the 5,000 plus students at must, but can we, can we make our neighbor our priority? Can we make your problem my problem? Can we share and see how we can move as a family? Because it would hurt for us to go forward and then see our colleagues who have been left behind. Trust me, it will not be a success story for us to tell. So let us embrace and let us take up all the different problems that our friends are, are, are facing and see how we can solve them. If someone is missing a class, please find out why they are missing a class. And if possible, we, we, we can see as a class, as a university, as students, how we can help them. And above all, I would like us to, uh, uh, to know that as leaders, we may not wait for the Uganda National Students Body to come to, to, to come and, and talk and talk for us because clearly they are they are nowhere to be seen. Actually, we are the Uganda National Students Association. We are students. They may have a, an executive body, but if they're not coming out to speak, are, are we also meant to, to keep quiet? No. We are going to uh, show the country, show these bodies that they are just in name alone, but we can do more. Already we have tried to write different letters to different people, even without their support, and, and we can do more. We are going to launch different so, campaigns to see how your plight, our plight is known in the yeah, country and the globe at large. Uh, thank you very much, and um, I think well elaborate. But um, you talked about uh, us lowering uh, uh, functional fees. Indeed, we all talked about how data is becoming a challenge. Yeah. These students really have hopes on us. Mm -hmm. I do not know if you have a direct um, action you're going to take, mm -hmm. maybe that we should expect, in regarding a call to lower maybe functional fees, yes. and maybe a part of portion of this is given to students for data or something like that. Yes. Let's talk action. Just one minute from yes. now. 
what are you going to do? Clearly, uh, our universities themselves seem to have different constraints in trying to lobby for all the different things that students face. Yes. But we have access to these ministries, we have access to these offices. If you can uh, recall back when we began semester one, when there was an industrial action and lecturers uh, were, were fighting for their interests and weren't coming to school, we as a guild took it upon ourselves to send a delegate to the Ministry of Education and had access to the, the minister herself and shared with her the, the different issues that we are facing and put our ultimatums. And coupled with the work that the university was doing, they equally se they sent a response to us. So what does this mean? We have access to these offices. And what we can do is we are going to uh, rally not only us as must, but work with other universities. Here we are at the Guild President. We have a Guild President Forum where we are sharing and networking. We are going to write to these different offices, present our cases to them, and get feedback from them, realistic feedback on what exactly are they attempting to do to deal with the different issues that we are facing. So when different surveys are brought unto you, we need your feedback, we need, we, we, we need your responses. There are going to be online petitions going around. Just take a minute, respond to them. Take a minute, share it. It okay. will show that it's a national and, 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 and global effort to work towards something. Wow. Uh, that I think you, you should also perhaps promise us with a when, with a, at least the 42 days, you know, getting to uh, now 17 days remaining. Uh, students, of course, the hope cannot be prolonged. Uh, me, who is hopeful that I have my e create, she's going to be there for me. The online and all these interventions that are coming, do you think they have some sort of a deadline? How soon is it? Yes. For you, you meaning for the, the yes, your intervention. Yes. So for all the different things that we have done, yes. I think uh, by next week, yes, we at least should be receiving the different lecture videos that we have had, so that people can catch up moving forward. Okay. Equally, within the coming fortnight, we are going to be uh, lobbying with different guild presidents, those that I can reach out to, mm -hmm. and those that uh, even while I may not reach out to them. We, even before, we access the ministry without them as well. Others will find us on the way. We may not have to wait for everyone to jump on board, but there's equally going to be a, a change petition going around within the coming week that is going to show that there are several students across the country. It's going to go to every single student to um, uh, log in and join the petition for a re-evaluation of the fee structures in all universities mm. and show these ministries, these these are our councils that we mean business, that there are people who are actually watching and we are critiquing all the different things that they are doing. We are aware of all these structures and we would like clarity on how they function. Okay, she's talking, uh, uh, you, you termed it as a petition? Yes. Okay, we wait to see that as an intervention. Now, let's hear from you. What should change? What's your recommendation? What's your next action? Well, thank you. I want to bring this one first notice that uh, we need to understand, I'm going to make a saying that, yes. uh, that uh, you cannot know how strong you are, not until being strong is the only option. How do I mean? It is true that we cannot take away the pandemic. The only option we have now is being strong. What am I saying? We have to embrace online learning. We have to embrace online learning. Yes. So I'm calling out to every student out there. Let us stop the lamentation, like you said, and now we go to the acts. Because uh, the pandemic is here to stay, and we don't know when it will come to end. But does that mean that uh, we should give up our academic uh, goals? what we wanted to achieve? Certainly not. So let us embrace, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, platforms. For example, as MOOCs, we have a, a learning platform called MOOCs. I'm going to call upon other universities out there. This platform, you can access all academic literature at zero MBs. For all course units, you can access that. So I'm calling out to my fellow leaders, 
I don't know whether you have those platforms or not. If you don't have them, it is very key because we have to really uh, move in, uh, in the new normal. Then I have to talk about, uh, someone talked about natural selection, survival for the fittest. Now, this degree is going to be a privilege. This time it's going to be a privilege. It won't be like before where it was a must you have to go. Now you will choose to either take on the degree or not to take, not to take it. So I'm saying, whichever student is there and they feel uh, uh, online learning is a bit hard, we should learn how to also become hard. That when the situation becomes tough, the tough gets going. I'm only telling them to also become tough. How should we get tough? Yeah, how should we get tough? I was coming there because uh, in recommendations, I was about to say that uh, we should embrace online learning platforms. And majorly, it should not be lecturer-oriented, but it should be student-oriented. For example, for us, we do uh, principles of management. If a lecturer comes and gives you a course outline, you as a student, it is incumbent on you. How have you used that course outline? Not sitting and waiting for a lecture. If a lecture is at two and you're waiting, I'm saying, let us feel like we are fighting our own battle. If there is any literature they have given you a small hint, delve deep, delve deep and, because that's why I say, this degree now is going to be a privilege. You either earn it or you earn it. Yeah, so uh, that is all I can say about that. Then I want also to, to tell you that uh, we should look at the issue of sustainability. How long is this going to, to stay? Mm. Sustainability. So I'm, I'm, I'm now calling upon the administration of different universities. Not to rush. See, when you rush, you rush. Not to rush into uh, making conclusive decisions because uh, I'm, I'm strongly aware that uh, we have inadequate and inefficient infrastructure as regards to ICT. Yes, we are in unison pushing online, but do we really have all the infrastructure to maintain it for the next five years? Something, whoever is planning, look at the issue of sustainability. It is very, very key. And lastly, I want to uh, again talk about the government. When the head is weak, be rest assured that all the body parts will have to suffer. Who is the head and who are the body parts? For us, we receive what comes from the Ministry of Education. For example, uh, if I'm to refer to the previous lockdown, people are fighting for survival and are being called back at school. Let them uh, do an inclusive planning. If you're planning for education, have you looked at a peasant parent? Have you looked? So when they're planning, for example, government institutions, someone was talking about functional fees. Yes, we pay, we, we pay taxes, and we know that all these taxes go to the government. At least when you're planning for the country, look at those peasants that may not afford tuition for everyone. If you say, for example, I, I personally have a brother who was in high school. He had just reported for Form 5, we had just paid tuition. They had started for three, three to two weeks. They went back home, and then they called them back. The other tuition, you wouldn't start that same, that, I think they are called terms. You wouldn't start that term minus paying the previous and you had to pay still the tuition of that very town. So does our government really care? Because that one shows us that uh, they don't even care about uh, what really happens to the actual parent. At least as a government, you can subsidize and say maybe if people had paid tuition for the previous terms, 
Let them maybe pay, maybe function of fees, and the government top something. But, but by saying this, I'm not saying it is all about the government, but it is the government that will shape us. Let them plan well for us, and we know that they really put us in consideration. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, and indeed, uh, that has been very, very fruitful. It's been uh, two long hours and a few minutes of us engaging. I'm so, so, so happy that you joined the panel and you agreed to do that. I hope we do much more of this, especially for the good or betterment of the students that we lead. Now, it is our norm on the feedback. Usually, before we end, we get one official and we ask you if you met them and you have only one minute, what would you tell them regarding the topic? Now, our official today is uh, the Minister of uh, Education and Sports and blah, blah. Uh, the First Lady, Janet Kataham Seveni. If anyone is to share this link to her, what's that one word that you have for her? You'll mention that and also offer your conclusion to your students as we end this show. Thank you very much. This time we start with uh, Ndugu, Your Excellency Dunstan. Thank you. Uh, Just quickly, like, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, for if I met uh, the Minister of Education one, I will tell her that uh, the education sector is doing poorly. And uh, I, will, I will advise her with the technical team to really work around uh, our education system. And uh, they should actually move from theory based to practical. Okay. And uh, last word to, yes. to, to students mm. I want to tell you, I will repeat this that uh, we have to embrace the new normal. The pandemic is here to stay. The only thing we need to do is to put in our personal involvement, our degrees matter, and we make those degrees. So wherever you are, let us not do a lot of momentum, but let us work hard to see how better can we fit in the new system. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Madam Janet Museveni, you are not only the first lady, but you are equally the Minister of Education and Sports. Ideally, that's a double threat. If anyone can handle the situation of the COVID-19 pandemic against education, it is you. With the influence and power bestowed upon you, not only by these states, but by God as well, we need you to not only guide the government, but also to bring together an interdisciplinary collaboration of all stakeholders in the country, right from telecommunication companies, uh, civil-based organizations, NGOs, institutions, all these people through your influence and guidance can come together to find realistic solutions to all the different problems that we have faced. We are looking up to you and counting on you and we believe that with your support and strength channeled towards this cause, we will achieve great solutions and results. Do not disappoint us. My recommendation to the country, my fellow students, my fellow leaders, is that we can no longer look to others to help us. We need to take charge. While, of course, there are responsibilities and obligations that different people have towards us, we are also duty bearers to ensure that we demand, we put them uh, uh, to account for all the different things that they owe us. And not only that, we need to equally give our support Yes, we are looking unto the government, the state, the institution, all these organizations, but we too have a role to play. So I'm calling upon everyone, not just the leaders here. When there's a problem, you can actually be part of the solution. A problem is an opportunity, and it's only when we come together, that's when we can have solutions. Different things are going to be coming on board, the petitions, the online evaluations, all these different requests will be coming to you. I urge you, take heed. We can't do it alone, but with your support, we will launch a compelling and phenomenal um, revolution towards bringing to our institutions the help that it needs. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, with all respect to, to Mama Janet, she's the first lady. In June, in, in genuine face, I would ask her to resign because she has failed in her role. Yes. And uh, before she resigns, I would ask her to give accountability of the money that was meant for education sector in the last year, money to buy chalk, money to buy the instructional materials, to buy library, library books, that, that, that one has not happened. I would ask her to provide accountability for sports money. In fact, before you leave that, for curricular, for curricular before, activities. Before, before you leave that, she doesn't have here this, but also there was money for radios. There was money to buy, yes, money to buy, to buy radios in the country. Uh, last year we had a scenario where local governments taken back the, the, and spent money, they, they, they took back one, was it 3.2 trillion, they took that, they had, the, the, the local governments had failed to spend that money. Really, when we have, we, when we have a, a, such an educational system and you tell us that they have failed to spend this money, I would also ask her, why has she failed to question the classified expenditure? In this question, why should we have classified expenditure that is unquestionable of around 4.5 trillion? Lastly, online learning, it is an organized disorganization. Thank you. Some message to Bishop Stewart University. <laughs> yes? Your final yeah. message to Bishop Stewart University students? Bishop Stewart University students. Uh, my message to Bishop Stewart University students is that we as student leaders, we are doing our best. Really, I'm, I'm not seated. I'm doing my best to make sure that we have effective and efficient learning. Uh, the issues of, of video-based learning, we have talked about this. The lecturers should, should record these videos for future reference. They can even record them to YouTube. We should have a YouTube channel. But the problem we have is that we still have the 19 OO lecturers who are not well versed with, with, uh, with, this, with, with, the, with, with the IT skills. Uh, then secondly, uh, we still have a gap in, in lectures. We, we have a gap as administration where lecturers are not corresponding to other administration. As, remember, for us, it is a private institution. You know, this, the, the university pays them. Currently, we have a, that, what we call internal, how can I do, internal conflicts, you understand? The lecturer cannot come out tell you what is happening, but the lecturers are not teaching, most of them, they are not teaching. So I, I, I would request the, the administration to harmonize, to harmonize with the lecturers, to harmonize with students, so that we can see how we get out of this. Because this is a post check. I thank you. Well, thank you very much. Post change, talking petitions is all that has been on the youth feedback this weekend. We've been talking about how affordable e-learning can get and trust me, in case you missed, this video will stay here and you could always still refer uh, your colleagues to here. And if you know that official that missed this, you could still forward this uh, link to them. We need them to hear this. Otherwise, what we get from here is the lessons we get from vaccinating and all that. What, by the way, the theory of vaccination, who knows? Mm. That they get the same very uh, virus mm. and... Mm. Uh, yeah. So in this case... Mm. Of course we understand uh, the, the white conspiracy about, uh, about no, no, the African. No, 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 don't, 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 don't go that side. We will come back, that's for another day. The whole point was that you solve the virus with a virus and these people are saying to be solved such a problem they are coming now to be part of the problem and we expect he says he's running the fellows we expect a statement from them to the uh, nation uh, there is a petition coming out from uh, from her we expect that all uh, to come he also says he's running all fellows we expect these leaders to have a statement very soon but also a few measures but most importantly they put out their feedback to you who is in charge and you gladly watch this you could be academic registrar you could be whoever official in that university you had what they recommend and i cannot say much more than that thank you very much till then the show is hosted by sam and we will be coming next weekend with another hot topic with other youths and I've been Sankara Berhanga moderating this panel. See you next Saturday. So a few days ago, you joined the crowds in the market for your fresh foods.
you'd equally brave the risky streets exposing yourself to the virus. Cut the hustle. If you're in Barara, all your fresh foods can now find you on your doorstep.